Moment of truth. So I finally got all the parts that I need for the Razer Pocket Mod project. So let's put this thing back together and get it running. I'm really happy with how the frame finish turned out. Check that out up close. Super glossy because he laid down the clear coat pretty thick. Here's what the plastics look like up close. Turned out really nice. I'm definitely gonna have him refinish the frame for my YZ250. The wheels also turned out pretty decent considering how rusty they were. It looks a lot better. As far as drivetrain, I'm gonna be using this Vever motor. It's a MY1020, 2000 watt motor and matching brushless controller. This is just from one of my previous projects that I no longer use. Now I usually use a 13 tooth sprocket like this one on my MX500 and MX650 projects. But since the Razer Pocket Mod came with a smaller wheel set, I'm actually gonna be using a 15 tooth sprocket to hopefully offset for the overall diameter difference and target the similar speed. And then I'm just gonna be using a keyed thumb throttle for this one, since it's gonna be a lot easier for a nine year old girl to hold on to the handlebars this way. And the mounting points on the Razer Pocket Mods are quite different than the SX and MX series dirt bikes. As you see, it's a flat bracket. It doesn't bolt on from the sides, which is very similar to their go-karts or even the Razer E300 style scooters. So we're gonna be using this adapter by Matric. This bracket converts the bolt pattern from MY1016 to MY1020. How it works is you line up these three smaller holes with the original holes for the original motor mount and you bolt the bracket onto the frame from the bottom and then you put the MY1020 motor on top and then you bolt that on with these four larger pre-threaded holes. And then the two remaining holes on the far end are actually for the chain tensioner and then they provide the hardware for all of that. If you are interested in checking out any of the items that we're using for this project, I'll have everything linked in the description below. I still like hand torquing all the bolts just to make sure we don't over tighten anything or strip it out. There's just something more satisfying with hand torquing for me personally. Wow, that fit like a glove. And there's literally a quarter inch of space above the motor. Right, and this is how the motor looks mounted. This is as much motor as you can bolt onto this frame. That's chain driven. Obviously another option is to go hub motor, but that is simply just not in the budget for this build.
And as far as the battery, I'm gonna be using this 48 volt, 10 amp hour lithium battery pack by Cal MM. This one has a discharge current of 30 amps, which is pretty matched to the brushless controller that came with the Vever kit. That controller is rated for 33 amps, so it is just about the perfect battery for that. It came with a two amp charger that has an output of 54.6 volts. It came with two pigtails. One is a XT60 adapter. So if your controller has one of these, it's gonna be direct plug and play. The controller we're using does not have this connector. So I'm gonna be saving this for a future project. This pigtail, I'm gonna wire directly to my controller. And then that's just gonna plug straight in here. This battery comes with its own charge port. I'm actually going to be using this factory foam packaging as a battery tray. I'm just going to trim it on its sides and we're going to fit it on the factory battery tray. I'm going to cut the foam down to about five and a half inches wide since that's the width on the inside of the frame. And here's how we have the battery mounted. I trimmed down the foam insulation all around the edges just to make more clearance for the plastics. Plenty of clearance on the back side. It's not gonna go anywhere since it's a really snug fit. I also have another layer of foam at the bottom of the battery tray just to elevate this a little bit. I thought I had to trim down the bottom of the seat, but it actually works out perfectly as far as height. And then what I'm planning on doing is having the controller mounted inside the seat along with majority of the wiring and all the wire connectors. This just minimizes the chances of the most important electronics from getting wet. And I like how the motor, the battery, and the controller, which all get hot under load, have a good amount of distance in between. This just helps dissipate heat a little bit better. Here's that 15 tooth sprocket. Keep in mind if you're working on a MY1020 style motor, it is reverse thread on the shaft. Tightening it is turning counterclockwise.
Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to extend the chain maybe two links. Might as well just make a brand new chain. Hopefully I got the length right. Perfect. So I just have to add two links. I'm not gonna fully snug down the rear axle yet. I still gotta do the disc brake conversion. Now you might be wondering why I put a three speed switch down here facing down on the frame rather than putting it on the handlebar. That was actually a request from my buddy Chris since this is gonna be for his nine year old daughter. He wants to give it to her with the lowest speed setting initially and then turn up the speed eventually as she gets used to it. But he wants it kind of hidden out of the way just so she doesn't accidentally switch it to a higher speed mode. I just realized that I had this handle mounted incorrectly on the frame earlier. I had it on top and it was too far up. So I just corrected that. And then I had to move the speed switch over to the right side so you can reach it from the bottom if you really want to. Moment of truth. I definitely have to resolve some sort of balance issue back here. It appears that the rear sprocket or the free wheel is bent since it does have a wobble whenever I'm throttling it pretty hard and it's causing quite a bit of vibration but i am glad to see this thing turn on for a shot at this point all we got left to do is to clean up all the wiring resolve the balancing issue with the rear wheel do the disc brake conversion and then reupholster the seat and then we should be ready to take this thing out all right guys we got quite a lot done today got this thing running on first try i just got to resolve whatever's going on with the rear wheel i might try swapping out the free wheel and rear sprocket from one of my mx 650 wheels and my storage unit i gotta go there anyway since i gotta take off the rear 140 millimeter rotor and brake caliper from my sx 500 since i'm using the matric rear disc brake conversion kit which uses the stock SX or MX rear brake kit, which should be a lot more reliable than the factory drum brake that comes with these pocket mods. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like
this kind of content, want to keep up with some of my projects, such as this Pocket Mod or my SX500, my Talaria, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.